Hey everyone, this is Sean. Today I want to show you how to turn your Vibe Coded apps into something that's reliable for shipping. For a lot of people who are watching my videos, they're probably not from a technical background. Don't feel like GitHub is a monster. It's very important for you to make sure that you control the versions of your code. And if you're collaborating with someone, it's also very important for everyone to contribute to the same code base so that you're not creating conflicts, all that kind of stuff. And I want to make sure that you understand the basics, which will cover 95% of the chances where you're going to use GitHub for deployment and for iteration of your products, okay? So let's get started. Right now you can see that I vibe coded this personal website and I actually just did it one shot with GBD5 with a bit of a tweaking. And you can see that there's a, like a solar system here where I can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, I'll show you how to firstly link this to a GitHub and then I'll show you how to make changes and then ship it you know, constantly with the current app to Vercel, okay? So you can see right now that I have this cursor open. I'm just just we're open this project. Uh, it's on my desktop, uh, in my developer folder, and GitHub CI/CD. So I'm currently in my cursor where I just had this built this like local project with GBD5, and I listed down some of the most basic steps for you uh, right on the right hand side. And we're gonna walk through it step by step. Okay. So the first thing is that I want to link the local project to GitHub, and the way to do it is that we should come to GitHub. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And we should create a new repository right here, github.com, new repository, okay? I'll just say uh, yt-github-cicd, okay? So I'm gonna keep it public, um, and then everything else, I'll just leave it like this. All right, create repository. Cool, so you can see that there is a, there's like two options. The first one is create a new repository on the command line. Second option is push an existing repository from the command line. In our case, the second one, because we already built the product, Okay, so let's come back here. Um, let's open a terminal. So by the way, I'm in cursor. Come to terminal, create a new terminal, or split the current terminal, all right? And then let me just make it bigger for you. Okay, so uh, on the left-hand side, it's running the product. On the right-hand side, you can see that, oh, we're currently in this folder called personal site. If I just do git status and check, all right, we can already see that we kind of have some like untracked files over here. All right, so normally I think you should do git init first. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come back here and double check. You can see that it's pushing a new existing repository to the command line, and it's doing like git remote add origin with the current link, with the current link, and then create a main branch, and then push it to the main branch. Let's just copy this and come back to my terminal, okay? And then paste it here and hit enter. You can see all these like 100% done. That means like you already pushed the current folder to your GitHub, all right? Let's come back here. If we just do Command R to refresh the page. Yeah, you can see that everything's here, okay? I also prepared a little um, readme file over here for you to um, double check after you finish watching this video. Okay, so how do we connect this to deployment? How do we connect GitHub to something that's live? So currently we built this website through Next.js. Um, the natural way to do this is that you're gonna go to Vercel and then connect your current GitHub repo to your Vercel account so that the main branch over here will be automatically linked to your Vercel. So let's go to vercel.com <clears throat> and then let's do add new project, okay? The GitHub current repo is public. It's created like a minute ago. If I just like click on import it, it will start importing. If you don't find it, that means like your, your, uh, your GitHub repo is probably uh, private, right? You just need to go to do some setting and um, turn you know, the private one to public one. Let's import it. Uh, and then all these settings is basically telling you, okay, we're using Next.js for the framework. We're running it in the root directory. And if you have some commands you wanna change, you can edit here, all right? But in, by default, we're just using npm run build to build and then um, do all the installation with these commands. Environment, environment, environment variables is like, if you're say doing like logins using Google Cloud uh, for Google OAuth, or if you're doing like some databases like Superbase, you can put your keys here, okay? Uh, but this is out of the scope of today's videos, unless we have time. All right, let's just start deploying this website. All right, now it's deploying. So what is happening right now, I'll just try to explain it, is that it's looking at the GitHub that has all the code and is looking at the main branch. Remember this, like I'm talking about main branch here because later I'm gonna show you how to set up a second branch so that you do not always like change the main branch, which is directly linked to the deployment over here, right? 
Imagine situations where like you have like 10,000 users out there and uh, you, you just change some code and then pushed to your GitHub and immediately everyone sees the final version, which is great for fast iteration. But then, you know, in cases where like, oh, if it breaks the whole thing, right? You don't want to do that. You want to create another sub branch, like a different version of your app and then run it first before you push it to the main one, okay? In terms of CI CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, it's always by default um, pushing the main branch into production, okay? So I'm gonna show you right after this, after we um, deploy the first version, and then we'll be working on how to um, set up some sub branches, and then uh, we're gonna like push it, make a pull request, and then you know merge, all these kind of stuff, okay? Cool, let's continue. So now this is done, we can go to continue to dashboard. Okay, so you can see that there's a dashboard here and there's a link here. If I just click on the link of the domains, you can see that my app is already live, ytgithub.vercel.app, uh, okay? I can scroll down to check out the solar system. The second thing is that, as I mentioned, uh, let's work on a different branch because we wanna protect the main branch, okay? Remember when I said that Currently, we're in the main branch, and if we push anything to GitHub right now, we're gonna end up you know, pushing the main branch into the production level, all right? So now I'm gonna show you the example of where like, okay, after we fix this bug, instead of doing, instead of pushing to the main, let's create another separate branch so that we can test things out before we push it to the final production, okay? The way we do it is that we can do say like, Currently, git status tells me that we're still in um, the main branch. So what I wanna do is that I wanna do git checkout dash b, which is another branch. I'm gonna call it um, um, feature iteration branch, okay? So currently we switched a new branch called feature iteration. Let's do git status one more time. Let me just make this a bit bigger for you. It's very important. Um, let me hide this. Okay, so currently we are at uh, the new branch called feature iteration. Git add space dot, all right, git status one more time. You can see that, oh, we currently added the new changes to kind of a stage where, you know, it's kind of ready before we push. All right, so we're gonna add a message to it, git dash commit, commit dash n, and say um, commit to a new branch, all right, and then git status one more time can see that, yeah, the tree is clean. We're on feature iteration branch. If we do git push, uh, you can see that we got a little error, which is fatal, which is telling us in order to push to a current branch and set the remote as upstream, you need to use this command instead. All right, what this one, what this one says is that instead of doing git push, you need to say, okay, I'm gonna uh, set upstream to origin with this new branch name, because our GitHub doesn't know there's a new branch already, all right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna copy this, come back here, paste it in, hit enter. Cool. So you can see that, okay, the branch feature iteration set up to track the origin slash feature iteration. All right, what does that mean? Come back to your GitHub. Feature iteration had recent pushes 13 seconds ago. You can do a pull request later, all right? Before we do that, let's double check, okay? So if you click on main branch, you can see that there's a new branch called feature iteration. And main branch, main branch doesn't change anything, okay? Like if I click on nine commits, you can see that there's no new commits here. But if I switch to feature iteration, you can see that there's a new uh, commit, okay? And you can see that there's a orange little dot here that's connected to Vercel automatically. And it's kind of, it's kind of building right now, okay? So I can click on the details. I'm gonna do command click to start a new tab, okay? All right, if I turn on the building logs, I can see that it's building it, all right? Yeah, I think it's status is already ready. Uh, let's come to our main Vercel projects. You can see that the previous two changes, let me make it bigger for you, was in production mode. The last changes was in preview mode. All right, preview means that it's not in production yet, okay? So if I click onto it, I can see that there's another, like, there's a few domains here, okay? If I click on this new domains, good, no problem, okay? No problem. So uh, if I come back to um, my features, one second, 
come back to my main GitHub, sorry, uh, you can see that the main branch still has the latest deployment, which says it didn't work, okay? So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna come back to GitHub and say, okay, feature iteration had recent pushes one minute ago. Uh, before I do this, I wanna show you real changes. So I'm gonna make something, uh, I'm gonna change something in the code as well, all right? Let's come back to the code. I'm gonna add emoji here. I'm gonna say fire, fire, fire. All right, I like this. Click save, come back to the terminal, get status, double check. Okay, something modified. Again, let's check. We're currently in this branch called feature iteration. We're gonna do git add everything. Check git status one more time. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. All right, now we're ch changing something in hero section. I'm gonna say git commit dash m, added emoji fires, and then git push. Guess where this is going? This is going to feature iteration branch, not the main branch. Let's come back to GitHub. Refresh the GitHub page. You can see that the main branch currently still stuck at initial update with a failed uh, deployment with nine commits only. But if we click on feature iteration, it's basically showing you another copy of the entire code base, but then there are two commits ahead of main. Remember that? We did one change for the formatting, the other one is adding emoji. How do we do this? Firstly, let's click into the commits, okay? We can see that the new commit is running again, added emoji files, fires, and then I can do command click on the details to double check if, it, if it's building properly on Vercel. Okay, this is done. I can either click on either of these domains or I can click on visit. Good, look at this. We got the fire emoji on the preview version. But if we come back to Vercel, click on the main project, come to the most recent production level, okay? Click onto it and click on visit. You can see that the main website is not updated at all, okay? Now we're gonna help you push from your feature branch to a main branch so that your, the rest of the users can see what's going on in your app, all right? How do we do that? We come back to GitHub again. Sorry guys, I know this is lengthy. Uh, if, you're, if it's the first time that you watch GitHub, just appreciate you know, how this is how people learn from the beginning, okay? I'm just trying to look, explain things in a very basic way so that it makes sense to Vibe coders who don't necessarily come from a computer science background. And um, if you're a professional GitHub user, let me know if you any if you new, any extra steps that you wanna add here, okay? But I'm gonna just gonna finish this real quick. So uh, the way we do this is we come back to our main GitHub page. You can see that feature iteration has pushes two, has recent two pushes two minutes ago. What I'm gonna do is that we're gonna do this thing that's called compare and pull request or PR. Oftentimes you probably hear the word PR, that's pull request, okay? Click on it. You can see what's going on here. Let me make it a little bit more visible. If you scroll down, you can see that there are two pending P, uh, commits. The first one is adding emoji, sorry, the first one is committed to a new branch. Second one is adding emoji fires, okay? And you can see the changes of what's going on in your, in your code, all right? I click on each one of them. You can see the details. If I come back, click on this one, you can also see the details, okay? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say, uh, I will merge this into main for production. And you can see the direction here, from compare feature uh, iteration back to main as a base, all right? Let's create the pull request. <clears throat> now it's merging it. There's some checks that you need to do, all right? The checks here are basically Vercel checks making sure that there's no errors when you're pushing it to Vercel. And there's no conflicts. Now it's ready for uh, merging the pull request, okay? So uh, let's just check a little bit more. So there's a preview that was deployed two minutes ago. Uh, now, if I click on merge pull request, confirm merge. Congratulations, you have merged it to your GitHub. Let's see what's happening now. Come back to your main hub you see the main commits increased from nine to 12 already. And there's a little orange 
brownish dot, meaning that it's pending. Let's click into 12 commits. Can you see that there's a merge pull request by myself from this branch features, okay? And if you click on this, you can see that it's being pushed to our um, production. Let's do command click, come back here. Still building, okay. Make it a little bit smaller. All right, this is done. And let's come to our production level of URL, YT GitHub CICD Vercel app. You can see that the emoji is back, the formatting is fixed, everything is done. Okay, congrats. I think you're, you're done like with the 80% of the cases where you're gonna use GitHub for uh, CICD. Cool, I hope this is helpful. And uh, again, this is a very simple and basic walkthrough on the, mo the most used use cases for um, linking your local projects to GitHub and then to Vercel and making sure that you're not pushing all the changes directly to a main branch and that you're always making sure that you have a sub branch. Um, and then after you make some commits, you need to double check the preview of these websites to make sure that it works before you merge into the main, which will be linking to the production level of code, okay? I just think that this is a very good habit to have uh, for Vibe coders so that your code will be more reliable for shipping and iterating for the long term. All right, let me know if this video is helpful and I hope you have learned something. And if you're an experienced GitHub user, let me know what other use cases you use most of the time. But I guess for solo builders or for technical, smaller technical teams, this is more than enough. Cool, thank you very much. See you next time.